Fire support for reconnaissance groups capturing a control prisoner has always been an important part of reconnaissance search. Usually this task was assigned to artillery and mortar batteries, which destroyed enemy firing points, thereby facilitating the work of scouts. However, during the Great Patriotic War, not only artillery was used for this purpose in the Red Army. The first pancake is lumpy. It is not known who exactly from the headquarters of the 3rd Shock Army came up with this idea, but for the first time, FOGs were used in intelligence at the end of April 1944. By this time, the 13th Battalion had already adopted a new type of flamethrower, FOG-2. It differed from its predecessor by a shorter hose. In addition, the incendiary bomb and the powder charge were placed in one glass and actuated by one electric fuse. It was possible to test this weapon in practice on the night of April 29 to 30. At the position of the 597th Infantry Regiment of the 207th Infantry Division near the village of Navalok, a flamethrower platoon of Lieutenant Alexander Belenko arrived with a dozen fog twos. Having dug them in the right place, Belenko's subordinates, on a signal, blew up them, dousing the enemy trench with fiery grain. However, the reconnaissance group that broke in there did not find the Germans. They fled into the second trench. After searching the first line of trenches and looking into the dugouts, the scouts did not find anyone and returned back. Despite the failure, the commander of the 207th Division noted the effect that the flamethrowers had on the enemy and petitioned for an award to the participants in the reconnaissance search. Having assessed the prospect of using FOGs, the command of the 3rd Shock Army continued to implement the experience gained. After reconnaissance on April 30 at the positions of the 93rd Rifle Corps, the flamethrowers were to move to the defense zone of its northern neighbor, the 79th Rifle Corps. At the initiative of the Chief of Staff of the 171st Division, Colonel Porkachev, it was decided to use the flamethrower platoon of Lieutenant Galkin, who arrived at his disposal when capturing control prisoners at the positions of the 380th Infantry Regiment. The number of FOGs transferred to the division was twice as much as indicated in the order of the Stekor. Therefore, the division headquarters decided to organize not one, but two reconnaissance searches at once. Preparing for the task. Based on the technical capabilities of flamethrowers, during the reconnaissance, the officers of the headquarters of the 380th Regiment chose two objects for reconnaissance searches. Trench and two machine gun points near the village of Orikovna. A trench and two machine gun points 600 meters southwest of the village of Spurovo. The first object was to become a target for the scouts of the 380th Regiment. The reconnaissance group, formed from the fighters of the 50th Army Penal Company, had to work with the second. Both actions were planned to be held on the night of May 5 to 6, since it is hardly possible to describe both in detail within the framework of the article. We will more fully describe the reconnaissance search near Orkovna, confining ourselves to a brief mention of the actions at Spurovo. Observation of the first object established that it is a trench stretching along the front 15 meters with open areas on the flanks. There were machine guns on them and on the reverse slope of the height there was a residential dugout. Neighboring firing points were located on separate small heights at a distance of 50 to 80 m. A wire fence and minefields protected the object along the front. According to the plan, the flamethrowers placed all 17 FOGs in one place. They were supposed to neutralize the left flank of the object in one gulp. The task of the cover mortars was to suppress the firing points on the right flank. Using hidden approaches, the sappers together with the reconnaissance group conducted a test sortie to the neutral zone, discovered a minefield with tension mines, and neutralized them. The officers in charge of the reconnaissance search explained the task. After the reconnaissance group reached the starting line, the cover group of Sergeant Vaisemkin was the first to move forward. Her fighters were dispersed in a chain on the right flank. They were followed by Yakovlev's scouts and lay to the left of fellow soldiers. The signal for the attack was a volley of high explosive mortars. The scouts themselves had to warn the flamethrowers about their readiness for action. They pulled the cord behind them and, after reaching the line of attack, they had to signal it with frequent jerks. 
After the volley of Vavogis, the Yakovlev group attacked the machine gun point at the facility and took the language. Vasyunkin's soldiers at that time blocked a residential dugout on a slope so as not to allow the garrison to flee from a height and also prevented the approach of reinforcements from the depths of defense. After capturing the prisoner, Yakovlev's scouts immediately retreated and the support group covered them with fire. The headquarters of the regiment allotted one hour for the entire operation. Battle at Spugrovo. Simultaneously with the scouts of the 380th Regiment, a reconnaissance group of the 50th Penal Army Company began to operate near the village of Spurovo, located east of Orkhovna. The scouts were supported by a dozen FOGs. At 2.30, 10 penalty boxers took their starting position, and by 4.10, having passed through the passages in the minefields, they reached the attack line, being 20 to 30 M from the enemy trench. At their signal, seven high-explosive flamethrowers fired a volley at it, and the firing points, after which the penalty box burst into the trench. Jets of flame flew over the trench without causing any harm to it. However, the fiery rain had an exceptional moral effect on the German soldiers. They threw machine guns and fell to the bottom of the trenches. The scouts took advantage of this. Once in the trench, the fighters of the penal company quickly captured one enemy soldier, killing all the rest. Then the reconnaissance group, together with the prisoner, began to retreat towards their positions. The German infantrymen who came to their senses tried to pursue her, but a volley of reserve FOGs and mortar fire drove them back into the trench, while the scouts, along with the prisoner, disappeared into their trenches. Reconnaissance at Spirovo passed without loss. The enemy opened artillery fire only 20 minutes after its completion. Unfortunately, during the shelling, the commander of the flamethrower platoon Lieutenant Galkin was seriously wounded. Conclusions Intelligence searches near Orkovna and Spirovo gave excellent results. Scouts of the 380th Regiment captured a machine gunner of the 1st Battalion of the 49th Regiment of the 28th Wehrmacht Jager Division. The penitentiaries captured language from the reconnaissance detachment of the same formation. It is curious that a day later the success of the 171st Division was repeated by its neighbor, the 46th Guards Rifle Division. On the night of May 6-7, the reconnaissance group of the 141st Guards Regiment, with the support of the FOGs of the platoon of Lieutenant Vorobiev, captured a German non-commissioned officer who died of wounds and trophies, a machine gun, machine guns, and rifles. The command was satisfied with the results. Already on May 6, 1944, the commander of the 79th Corps, General Zuv, awarded the scouts of the 380th Regiment. The Red Army soldier Yakovlev became a holder of the Order of Glory IE degree, and Sergeants Vesenkin and Polteranin, Red Army soldiers Gapanov, Borobyov, and Tvachenko received the Order of the Red Star. The commander of the flamethrower platoon, Lieutenant Galkin, was awarded the medal for military merit. During interrogations, the prisoners interestingly described the impact of high explosive flamethrowers on the German defenses. They showed that the first line of trenches had not been damaged, but that the burning liquid had overwhelmed the nearby gun emplacements. And although the nature of their destruction is unknown, after the volley of FOGs, they did not fire. As already mentioned, the fiery rain paralyzed the actions of the German infantry hiding at the bottom of the trench. Assessing the experience of using high-explosive flamethrowers in reconnaissance searches, the headquarters of the 171st Division came to the following conclusions. High-explosive flamethrowers can be used not only to destroy tanks and manpower of the advancing enemy, but also during the action of the WG to capture control prisoners. The lack of visibility did not allow us to draw conclusions about the number of exterminated manpower and destroyed enemy OTs, which is why the action of the FOGs in capturing control prisoners should be considered mainly disorganizing the defense and suppressing the enemy's manpower and OTs. Unequal length jets of the burning mixture were observed. The elimination of this shortcoming, as well as an increase in the targeting of the action of FOGs, would make them an even more powerful tool in the action of the WG. 
Unfortunately, it was not possible to find out whether the use of high explosive flamethrowers and reconnaissance searches was an innovation of the 3rd Shock Army or whether it already relied on someone else's experience. One thing is clear, her command realized the advantage of weapons, the correct use of which gave 100% result in the capture of control prisoners.